Mr. Young and Foreign. Kick to the gut! 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 Your podcast sucks. Yo, I only have two words to say to you this week, bro. You're fire. It's release mania. <laughs> uh, is are we even in the release window, the release period right now, or do they just spring this on people like randomly throughout the year? I have no idea, man. It's like I thought it's once a year thing. Yeah. So now uh, it's like four, three times a year. Ah, <sighs> budget cuts. That's what we're gonna be talking about today. Plus that AEW full gear preview. Hey, it's Mister Young. And it's foreign in the building. Happy weekend. Yeah. Well, okay. Foreign said weekend because we are recording this on the weekend. But you're watching this right now. Maybe you're watching the premiere on YouTube. Monday afternoon. How are you doing? We hope you've had a great weekend. I know we are just projecting into the future. But because we had um, other things that we had to do, you know, work-related yeah. things. <laughs> Of course, of course. It never ends. But you know what? We are on the chat. So mm. please continue interacting. We'll reply definitely on the chat. Yes. Uh, sure. In the meantime, though, okay, what a day for wrestling. Now, a um, little caveat. I haven't watched Rampage yet. So yes. I have no idea what went on. But I literally just watched Dynamite last night. I've, mm. I've had so little time to watch the shows live. So I watched it on, like, you know, delay. Yeah. How was speaking, it for you? Uh, speaking of delay, by the way, foreign is <laughs> once again. Uh, we need to crowdsource, crowdfund his internet uh, connection. Actually, right now, foreign just needs a network uh, cable adapter. No, no, you got the network cable already. You just need the adapter for the laptop, right? Because okay. your Mac doesn't have. Yeah. So Gaddafi has given me the internet cable, but I think I need another one of our listeners to give me <laughs> I'll, I'll get a lot. Oh. I get around to buying it, lah, hopefully. Okay. Yeah. Soon, I hope. But in the meantime, yeah, so... let's pray to the internet gods. And yeah, before we talk about Dynamite and Full Gear and all that stuff, let's talk about the big news, okay? Uh, dropping the bomb is the WWE. In fact, when this list first came out, I believe it was not confirmed yet, but it has since been confirmed, right? Yes. Correct, correct. It was a huge Ooh. number of people, man. Yeah, coming off of Crown Jewel, their biggest payday of the year. Guess what? Oh, we need to now cut bu uh, cut budget. Um, yeah, it, exactly. It was the worst timing, right? Um, okay, just seeing this, right? Do you feel a sense of like, with, with every batch of releases, do you feel like WWE is just burning its goodwill amongst its fans? Yeah, man. I mean, okay, for the investors, they don't care, clearly. Mm. But like the core audience, the people who are loyal, yeah. this really puts the sour taste in our yeah. mouths. Can I say something though? Like, I don't know if this is personal. It's probably not personal. Like you just said, it's probably just a matter of who's being used. Oh, they're not being used. They've been on the shelf for a while. They're costing us money. Cut. You know what I mean? Because now I'm just taking a quick glance at the list, right? A lot of these people haven't been used in a while, except for one or two exceptions. Yes, correct. And also, it's the third quarter earnings that just happened recently, right? Ah. The quarter, quarter, quarter earning calls. Mm -hmm. And they just posted like huge increase from last year. So they are doing really well. Profits at, at sky high. It's as if they are cutting their losses. Lah, so, okay. What, sale, right? what this sounds like to me is, I don't know about sale or whatever, but what this sounds like to me is they are trying to make their next quarterly earnings even more happening yeah yeah it's like right before the quarterly earnings oh. they want to show a huge increase right yeah yeah prop it up by removing a bunch of costs so you remove the cost the losses oh all of a sudden your earnings damn high right so i don't know what's going on in the company corporately but it seems like maybe they have to hit a certain number or and this is one of the the worst things about big corporations every uh report they have to show improvement well, how do you show improvement if the product yeah. is not improving, if buy rates are not improving? Well, you cut people. Lah. 
exactly, bro. Doesn't WWE remind you of WCW right now? Yeah, which is actually very scary. But then again, it's not like you have uh, Tony Khan money sitting there just splashing out cash. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. this is going to hit a critical mass at some point where Tony Khan's like, okay, I have too many people myself. I need to cut some people. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And also, like, a few years ago, WWE was hoarding talent. Mm. I feel like now because of like the situation kind of evening out yeah. it made sense for them to like streamline their talent and focus on the people that they really want to focus on you know the joke where like oh if you were triple h's pet project you you shaking in your boots right now you damn uh, sell like yeah man um, bro like all the nxt champions all gone yeah uh i wonder if it's uh, vince mcmahon going mm, i gave you a few years to run your shit now mm, no 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 nope. don't like it yeah. get rid of everything he started yeah, sounds like it, man. I mean, I was just watching uh, 2019 Survivor Series, mm. you know, um, and remember how Keith Lee was, like, amazing in that match. Oh, my God, yes. And then, he, didn't he have, like, a big spot in the Royal Rumble as well? Yeah, the, right after that, that, that run uh, in NXT where he became double champion as well. Mm-hmm. How can you screw him up so bad on the main <sighs> roster, bro? Um, okay, so, yeah, I guess we're jumping into it. And the biggest name, I guess, in this whole list of releases is... The Bearcat, which apparently, according to him, now he's revealed that that wasn't even his idea. Wait, so is it Bearcat or Beercat? People oh. keep like <laughs> giving me weird pronunciations, bro. No, like Bearcat <laughs> lah, as in the animal, the Bearcat. Yeah, yeah, it should be, right? But I mean, looking at his belly, it might as well be the Bearcat. Oh. <laughs> okay, but like, okay, let's start from the top. So, Keith Lee clearly is a headline release, right? Mm. Um, To be honest, to be fair, they weren't doing much with him. Mm. They yeah. would like they were trying to figure out how to repackage him and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. But clearly, you know, everybody knows he's super talented. Yeah. He could have been that something could have been done to him. Uh, going back to my point of all the people that have been released, well, most of them, at least ninety percent of them, have been either inactive or just not used on TV. So to me, if I were just a dispassionate non-fan investor, I'd be like, yeah, 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 that's a good idea, you know. Which yeah. leads me to believe that's exactly what is going on. So yeah, Keith Lee, they, he, he went away a while because of the COVID situation. He can't have COVID, right? Yep. And then they yep, repackaged him. He was the bad cat. It was still like, uh, he had a few matches and after that, boop, gone. Yeah. I remember he debuted like just the draw after SummerSlam last year. Mm-hmm. Remember he had this, uh, there was this one random pay-per-view payback like one week after SummerSlam. Do you remember that? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like immediate. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, last year. So, and that was when like he had his debut match, and everybody, uh, I don't know if you remember, but his debut victory was over Randy Orton. Yes, yes, that's right. And you're so like, big push. Yeah, so it's not as if he didn't come off strong. Like, okay, his momentum was there, mm. but how did they like kind of like pilfer it all away so fast? Um, yeah, writers don't know what they're doing. Um... Either, yeah, either that, <laughs> or maybe Vince McMahon took a look at him and they said like, okay, uh, I need to cover up his belly. Or like, yeah. you know, he's probably have an issue with him as well, but I don't understand. Yeah, um, yeah, considering the fact that we saw him thrive in NXT. So, <sighs> uh, <laughs> there is no even like no, no reason, no way we can figure out what's going on in the, the big man's head. Lah. So yeah. all we can do is speculate. Um, with Keith Lee, was his wife, are they married actually? I think they are. I okay. Think they are. Uh, yeah, the Asian, no, the Blasian baddie is gone. Uh, Mia Yim. And I mean, you look at what Mia Yim has done on the main roster, absolutely nothing also, la, other than being yeah. part of uh, Retribution. So that one, I'm not surprised. <sighs> I mean, she was also all right in NXT. She was making waves, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, she, yeah, so like Retribution really killed her gimmick though. Oh yeah, <laughs> destroyed her dead. Um, Talking about somebody else who was being groomed on NXT, even though I was never really a big fan of his work or his style on NXT, right? you know who I'm talking about. Then they debuted him on Raw and absolutely sucked all momentum and win right out of him because he showed up without his uh, valet, without his yes. girlfriend, who also got released. We're talking about Karrion Cross and Scarlett Bordeaux. Gone. No more. No bro, longer. They, they, uh, talk about potential, bro. Mm. Yeah, man, it's terrible. It's really terrible because I feel like at the end of the day, these are your future, you know, mm-hmm. future building block that you can build around the company. And then you still get rid of them. And where is the future going to come from? <sighs> uh, NXT 2.0, bro. 
No, no. Um, okay, Karrion Cross. Let's talk about him. Like, I mean, we've talked about him to death, actually, about how he's been absolutely, completely misused on the main roster. You know, he shows up, right? Has Didn't he lose his first match to Jeff Hardy? Oh. <laughs> yes, he did, he did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, it was so shocking that Foreign froze. Uh, so he lost his first match to Jeff Hardy. And then remember, we were talking about how, oh, maybe this is his whole gimmick where like he'll come back even bigger and strong and just destroy Jeff Hardy for many weeks. Obviously, none of that happened. Um, Jeff Hardy got traded or injured or some damn thing. And then he was just left kind of hanging there. And then he lost to uh, Bearcat for a while. Talk about two people who really floundered, had no idea what they were doing on the main roster, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I think of Karen Cross, I think of his promos, bro. Um, I I've never been a fan of his promos. Not gonna lie. Okay, okay, but for me, I do. Okay, the TikTok stuff uh, or the um, it was mysterious, and uh. he did have that aura. But like I said, it was TikTok stuff. Clearly, not the MMA stuff. No, no, yeah, not the <laughs> post like you know call up to raw stuff, which was him just randomly yelling and growling about stuff. Anyway, yes, correct. Okay. Uh, Scarlett Bordeaux. Let's talk about her then. And talk about completely wasted potential. I mean, look at her. She could have been a huge player mm-hmm. as a valet. And then maybe at some point as a wrestler herself. Like, we remember we compared her to a Sable, perhaps, in the future. A bit of a Sable, a bit of sensational Sherry, even. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Didn't even get a chance to hear her promo, bro. No, no. She didn't even appear once on Raw. That's the thing. Yeah. It's like, okay, Karrion Cross is there. He's foundering. He becomes Demolition Light, you know? And then the rumors were like, oh, they're going to bring in Scarlet and he's going to go on a dominating run. Well, none of that happened. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know, man. Uh, it's very hard for us to trust WWE. That's the problem now. Mm. Like, how do you get invested in characters when you never know when they get fired? Yeah. Well, to be fair, they haven't been pushing these characters anyway. Like, if you yes. take... And, and right now, we really need to take NXT out of the equation. NXT doesn't exist. It's not canon anymore, if you realize, mm-hmm. you know? Like, everything that has been built, we are basing it off of their uh, success in NXT. Well, according to certain people in the WWE hierarchy, that doesn't exist, apparently. <laughs> Bro, with all the releases, right? Mm. Can they fill up enough numbers to do a Royal Rumble or not? I think so, bro. Actually, <laughs> they should do a released Rumble. Bro, they can do a WrestleMania cut with the people they release, bro. Yeah, and the amount of talent, it would probably be a really interesting card too. Yeah. Um, okay, what's actually quite sad right now is I have nothing else to say about Karen Cross, which means, well, I guess he didn't ma- make that big of an impact. He did put out a interesting vignette on uh, social media, on his Instagram, um, mm-hmm. some graveyard. And all that. I felt like a very Undertaker-like promo, but uh, I, you know what? I hope they go back to where not. Where? Impact. Oh my god! <laughs> no, okay, I, I know. It's, I know. It sounds like a huge demotion. It is lah. Mm. But I thought they were really finding their strike as mm. like the lead heel duo in Impact. That was okay. where they were doing quite well. Mm. So I, I hope. I hope he gets back his killer cross gimmick. Ah, yeah. I, I wonder how many of these guys are going to be hashtag all elite in three months time. Oh, honestly, I hope none of them because, <laughs> free, like you said. There's gonna there's a bloating problem in oh. AEW right now. Okay, okay. Just looking, actually, we'll, we'll touch on that in just a little while, Like, who should um? Actually, you know what? No, no, no. Let's let's do it now. So, okay, we talked about Keith Lee. Where do you want to see him next? As weird as this sounds, I want to see him in New Japan. New Japan. Oh, actually, he has the physique and sort of, and, and the Japanese crowd would like you know gravitate towards. <laughs> That right, he gives me a bit of Bam Bam Bigelow vibes. Maybe yes. he just needs an excursion in Asia to yeah. rebuild his mystique. And and we know he's that big guy that can do fancy moves. And well, yeah. and, and New Japan would be the place to do that, right? Yeah, also, uh, people forget that he's actually going up there in age, he's in his late 30s, right? Really. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So it's not as if he got a second chance at a big run, you know. I yeah. think this might be his, and he also have health issues, mm. so I don't really want to see him like push him too much if yeah. he can yeah so uh yeah go japan have a you know like a resurgent run and then maybe one day come back who knows right uh yeah. carrying across you talked about impact already together with scarlet bordeaux mia mm-hmm. yim 
goes with him to New Japan, be I don't know. They, I, it feels like they will go to the same place. Yeah, of course, they will clearly stay together. Um, mm. maybe go, maybe if they go Japan, but probably I want to see her in Stardom though. Like I feel that Mia Yim is those kind of like traveling type mm. of wrestler. I can okay. see her traveling the Indies and independent. So sure, not really having a home lah for sure. There you go. Uh, next up, this is an interesting one because she put out uh, a statement as well saying that she was away. For mental health issues, she wanted to take yeah, a break. I, I saw and, that. Uh, the rumors were that she refused to be vaccinated. She didn't quite address that rumor. We're talking about Nia Jax. Yes, I saw what she wrote. Mm-hmm. Um, very interesting about the vaccine thing, though, because she made it clear that it wasn't because of vaccination. So the implication could be that she is not vaccinated. Yeah. Yeah. But then wouldn't they not allow her to work all this while? I don't think that's the case though. So I, I don't know. This is all he said, she said, to be honest, right? But maybe, yeah. but, but, but she, that's the thing. Like in the statement, she didn't say whether she was vaccinated or not. So mm. just not addressing that situation kind of implies to me that she indeed is not vaccinated and thus the mm. WWE are like, okay, you know what? We can't have you running around unvaccinated yeah. at live shows and potentially putting in... Uh, danger the rest of our workers is yeah, it discrimination yeah. yes but is it warranted well we're not the ones to judge i'm thinking even if it's a vaccination situation i don't she doesn't sound like someone who doesn't purposely want to get vaccinated it could be tied to her mental health thing maybe she is like having um but medical bro, issues uh sure but why wouldn't she mention that then you know um, yeah. see the thing is with the whole vaccination thing right like ah <sighs> There are some people who just don't want to be vaccinated and it has nothing to do with their health, you know? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It, it, it's just a weird thing. There have been celebrities who have been like anti-vax, uh, mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. know? Just because they are celebrity doesn't mean they don't have some weird ass, you know, beliefs. You know what I'm saying? Isn't there a huge hoo-ha with um, Black Panther's uh, Letitia, uh, right? The yeah, Shuri? Yeah, Shuri. She's also one of those who doesn't want to be vaccinated. But she's gonna be, play a lead character in like a major Marvel movie, so which which is a problem for them, you know. Yeah, of course. So of course. like, yeah, it's very interesting right now. This whole vaccination thing, it's sort of brought yeah. out the best and worst in people, right? I mean, even if okay, regardless of that, pushing that issue aside, mm. that, let, let's address what is it at face value, like her having a mental health uh, break. Um, I think it's warranted for her to take that break, which she already got approved by WWE. Mm. But it seems like the issue is. If she, she she wanted more uh, of a longer duration for her break, and that's when WWE is like okay, cutting their losses. What do you mm. think about that? Um, that's what it is, and I'm by no means trying to defend the WWE. I'm just throwing out suggestions, right? Maybe that's um her side of the story. You know, yeah. it seems like she's trying to justify it, like. You know, when you get fired or when you get released in that kind of a way, you feel very maligned. You feel like, oh, you know, just because I extended my leave, maybe it was already in the works. Because yeah. let's not forget, she's had a history of, quote unquote, injuring people, mm-hmm. hurting mm-hmm. people. She wasn't exactly setting the world on fire. She's not like, you know, like top star main event. You, you know yeah. what I mean? So a lot of it might come across a bit salty. But like I said, uh, nobody's, you know, judging whether she really had like serious mental issues or whatever it just at this point just sounds like she's upset and she has a right to be upset because she just got fired what's funny is uh when you talk about safety safety issues right in the ring um one of the people that commented on her release Mm -hmm. was charlotte flair oh she she put hardship 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 on her comment so you see i mean seems like everything's good between both of them Mm -hmm. um but yes you're right um, I saw a lot of the comments people were making fun of the fact that oh I guess she's not The Rock's cousin anymore oh <laughs> That's how my she got god fired. <laughs> uh, um, like with as with Charlotte Flair as well isn't that the rumour that Charlotte wants to get fired so she can go and be with her husband yeah. or fiancé yeah. I wonder uh, bro who are all these people smoking the rumours is it like an insider in WWE that's like leaking information probably and why are they not found out by yeah, now probably friends or friends or friends half of it is probably not true also you know what I mean that's yeah, why but I, if- I don't trust the dirt sheets that much. Yeah, so if they're reporting based on a rumor of a rumor, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, because we are also guilty, I guess, of oh, fanning yeah. the speculation flame. For sure. 
Yeah, but like, come on, Nia Jax, you're right. Like, she she had a good spot, mm. but you know, she's not gonna be like the dominant world champion of yeah. women. You know. Yeah. yeah. But okay, let's face it, lah. Huh? The fact that she's gone, yes, it sucks for her. But in terms of a product, do you think they've lost a huge asset? I say no. That's why I let me go back to my point. I'll reiterate. Nobody on this list, um, is a current like star that will hurt the WWE if they leave. None yeah. of them. They, they've been either portrayed poorly or they just haven't, you know, stepped to that next level yet. I mean, maybe not a huge asset, lah, but a huge ass. Oh yeah. my God. Oh. Uh, you know, she's like, she's not like Moscow. So. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay, let's, um, let's uh, talk about where she might land next, where it would be a good spot for her. I actually just thought of something that I none of us probably came to mind. Mm-hmm. Remember, like, a couple of weeks back, uh, they just announced that there's going to be a new women's only promotion? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I think she will make a great... I mean, she, she will make a great in terms of di- diversifying the size, mm. um, having someone like her in that kind of show. Right, probably. right. Well, we don't know how big that promotion is going to be, though. That's the thing. And she, uh, being The Rock's cousin and all, might have, uh, you know, she might demand quite a bit. That's why I would actually like to see her in AEW. Really, I mean, I mean, she can't be do any worse than Nyla Rose, right? Well, there's the thing. Imagine her and Nyla Rose as a team. Her versus Nyla Rose, like her at AEW, would definitely shake up the women's division. And we've talked about it. They need a bit of a shake up in terms yeah. of the women's division, right? Maybe she can be what they wanted Awesome Kong to be before yeah. she had to retire. You know? Yeah, exactly. Like they don't right now. AEW don't have that dominant, like you know, powerhouse woman. Because Nyla Rose apparently has fallen off to the side and is doing just dark. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that's legitimate. And I feel like, especially now that they said they have a TBS tournament, right? Mm. Like, clearly they're going to have two divisions worth of women. I think they need to pad out their female yeah. roster. Yeah, yeah. Uh, speaking of padding out their female roster, perhaps this next lady could do well in um, AEW considering her high level of skill. She is a little bit older, though, I believe. Another one of the releases, talking about Eva Marie. No, I'm kidding. No, no, no. <laughs> she needs to go nowhere. Uh, uh, talk about Ember Moon. Uh, oh, tough love, bro. <laughs> okay, okay. Before we get to Eva Marie, everyone's favorite, let's talk about Ember Moon. Yeah. Who we all know the amount of potential she had in mm-hmm. NXT, right? And then she came up to the main roster, floundered a bit, went back to NXT, and then floundered in NXT because of injuries. So, do you think this one is because she was injured a lot? Be clearly, yeah. I mm. mean, she's very unlucky with injuries. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, it's been going on for a while. She, you know, a lot of people forgot that she actually debuted in the main roster in like 2018, 2017. Oof. Wow, yeah, yeah. It was quite a while back. And I remember when she was like on the top of initial NXT run, that was like 2016. Because she was the one that I think fought against Asuka. Mm, yes. Asuka was doing that reign, right? Yeah. So, like, She's been around the block for quite a while. Mm. Yeah. But you know what's so funny? Um, somebody brought up to me, I think was it Jason um, mm. on, on DMs? He's saying that, you know, of all the people that lasted so long, mm. I never expected Dana Brooke to last this long. Oh my God, you're right. What is she still doing there? <laughs> she's she's just there. She's yeah. like the Gillian Hall back in the day, <laughs> like forever, never fired. You know? Okay, you wait. Uh, Scully, uh, oh, on Sunday, as we record this on Saturday, Scully on Sunday, second round of releases, uh, then... Yeah, really. yeah, but but speaking of Amber Moon, I mean, she is amazing. Like, you know, she can work one of the best female finishes that I have seen. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think she will bounce back greatly um, in AEW, yeah, for sure. But my only fear is, like you said, injury problem. So I think maybe a lighter schedule will help her. Even yeah. Impact also, I don't mind seeing her on Impact. Yeah, yeah uh, a lighter schedule, maybe more of a mentorship role as well, right? Yeah, I think she's already at that level. I don't know how young she is, what's her age, but mm. um, she seems to be someone very seasoned. So I think mm. she will be a great addition no matter what the roster. There you go. Um, it's time. It's time for everybody's favorite. <laughs> because she, remember when she first came in, there were a whole bunch of releases. So everyone was like, what? You all brought in Eva Marie to release other people? Well, now she gets the release X. Though, honestly... I don't think she gives a shit because she got movies, she yeah. got her social media. So to her, it's like, okay, law, whatever, law, you know? Bro, it, it's clear that they had no idea. I mean, maybe they had an initial idea of what they wanted to do with her. Yeah. But like, what was the whole point? It's the most pointless signing and firing of all time. 
can we say that like this is a clear example of like you just said them not knowing what they want to do they had a rough idea okay now we'll just bring her in and then see how see how pair her up with dewdrop the whole program was a wreck like i don't mm-hmm. think dewdrop got any rub whatsoever and then now even marie go away yeah i mean the only thing that's good about her i mean signing and release was that they, they helped to bring like piper niven on the main roster but from there onwards Bro, I mean, yeah, there's exactly. Else that can be done. <laughs> right now, Piper Niven, aka Dewdrop, is to me like hundred percent floundering. Like yeah. her, her thing. Like what, what is that? So she came in as kind of a a heel because she was brainwashed by Eva Marie, but then she half ass turn, and then now she's all of a sudden like finger yeah. jazz fingers. Like I, I don't get it. So yeah. wait, just to check, uh, Eva Marie, did she have a legitimate match? Like, did she do throw offense? She did. She had like a competitive match in her entire run this past no nope. half a year. No, nope. absolutely not. She was uh, on that weird part time contract. I think was she on a sable contract? I think you know what's a, you know what's a sable contract, right? Uh, what like, uh, like barely back wrestle? In the, back in the day, uh, Vince McMahon. Uh, because we, remember you watched the Luna version Dark Side mm-hmm. of the Ring mm-hmm. it was saying that uh, Vince McMahon didn't want Sable to be touched or hurt oh. in any way or bruised yeah. so they had to take care, good care of her then I'm like oh, probably Eva Marie is like, under that kind of situation <sighs> yeah uh, obviously somebody in the company loves Eva Marie lah, huh? let's just put it that way okay. John Laurinaitis <laughs> <laughs> people power so where does she go from here movies there you go uh, don't touch back to Back to B C list movies, uh, yeah, yeah, not yeah. a star movies. Yeah, and, and social media. Don't don't come and mess around with wrestling anymore. Huh? Mm. Yeah. Uh, Harry Smith, who I didn't even realize was with the WWE. Yeah, so that's crazy because I think they signed him after um, they put the dead in the Hall of Fame right this yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think probably gave her a run, and like, he's I think probably working dark matches or NXT, but he mm. was even never even on TV on nope. NXT. Yeah, and then like he's been released. Uh, okay. How do you think Natalia or Tyson Kidd feels backstage? Yes, yeah, they're all related. Okay, the thing is with Harry Smith, right? Did he used to have like issues with people there? That's why he never came into the WWE for such a long time. I know he had like, not say drug issue, but I know he he had some like issues in terms of his own upkeep. Mm. And I think they had to let him go because of that. Yeah. But I think he did a great job in New Japan, you know, building Mm. up his you know uh, aura again um but i don't know man like I mean, do, do you see him recent photos of him he looks quite old oh is it male maybe <laughs> maybe his expiry date has crossed already law and then they're like okay there's nothing we can do with him we're yeah, not even going to debut him on nxt he looks like a later day bulldog you know bulldog when he rests uh, in his jeans yeah yeah like very, very like uh not put together well yeah so back to uh, new japan lah I think New Japan is a great landing spot. Even if not that, right? I think NWA, mm. probably something a bit old school. I yeah. think probably will be up his alley. Mm-hmm. Hopefully. Mm. There you go. Uh, Lindsay Dorado and Grand Metalik. I lump them together because, well, you know. <laughs> Speaking of them, do you watch, uh, I mean, you watch Dynamite, right? You yes. realize that Kalisto debuted yes. on Dynamite over the past Kal- week. Kalisto and what's the other guy's name? Aerostar. <laughs> is Aerostar a WWE guy as well? No. No, no, he wasn't. Oh. He was a Triblia guy. Oh, but okay. Samurai Del Sol, I think, is his uh, former name. Okay, okay. So, yeah. Um, poor thing, like, didn't even get any fanfare. He just showed up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but back to Lindsay Dorado and Grand Matalik. I mean, they wanted to make them into like the new Rey Mysterio, but like clearly it's been shown no one can be a merchandise seller like Rey Mysterio. Yeah, and Rey Mysterio is still there. Yeah. So like, why do I need another luchador? I think they just need to have one token luchador <laughs> in the promotion. Can really. And plus, their token luchador has a son, so there's a built-in story there. Yeah. So like, they are really there. Right? I mean, lucha house party is was were they ever over? Um, maybe for a bit. You know, the crowd go lucha, lucha, but I don't think they were moving merchandise. And yeah, like it was a long time coming, lah. Huh? This one, let's just put it that way. Can I tell you something very weird and random? What's that? You know, lucha has a meaning in Malay. Ah, uh, really? What does it mean? What does lucha mean? Uh, lucha means pawn. <laughs> lucha house party takes a totally different meaning, bro. I know. That's why every time people start lucha, lucha. I think if you're with a Malay dude, they'll probably laugh. Oh my God. Uh, where do they go? <laughs> um, it's, 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 uh, I mean, back back to Mexico for sure. Mm-hmm. Come on. 
Hmm. Yeah, clearly. Clearly, they need, they need a home there and they have a home there. Yeah. Uh, next up is a guy we don't really see a lot of, Jeet Rama. Didn't he just had a match at NXT? Like, he just had a match. Was that him? Him? He lost yeah. to somebody, right? He fought the Sion, Sion Queen, right? Or something yeah, like no, no, no. Uh, Solo Sikoa, the, the, the third Uso. So he basically just got dropped out and then he got kicked out on the way out. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Wow, that's quite sad, yeah. Like, he was one of the... Uh, superstars or the wrestlers they brought up via the the India tryouts, right? Yes, correct. Um, and this is not the same as the View and Shanky, uh, no, not no, the no. main roster guy. No, no, no. So probably, I mean, another. See, there's the thing in WWE, like they probably want to have like a token one or two yeah. Indian superstars, not a lot. Okay, you know how old he is? No, forty, bro. Okay, makes a lot of sense. Yeah, but... this is yeah. He he hadn't even ever debuted on main roster. He's forty already. Yeah, this makes a lot of sense. So yeah. So I mean, why did he even sign him in the first place, right? <sighs> like you said, lot token, you know, guy from that region. Remember, they had like a one random Indian super show. Remember yeah, that? yeah, yeah. He was pro- he was on that show, right? Yeah. Was it earlier this year? I can't remember already. Or last year, it was definitely during the pandemic. But I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But like maybe maybe they realize like, okay, the Indian market, they're not going to really focus too much on it. I mean, they already are focusing on um, Shanky and, well, not so much Shanky. They have Jinder Mahal. They yeah. like, but honestly, they just need one or two. They don't need that many, right? Yeah, yeah. And like the Veer guy has a great story. Yeah. You might talking about the bionic arm guy. Yeah. And then yeah. the other guy looks like a mini great Kali. I mean, <laughs> settled already. Mini Kali, yeah. Um, <laughs> Veer now on, was it on Raw? They, they are referring to him by his full name, like Veer something else. Z or oh, uh, bro, so, bro, clearly we don't watch Raw enough. <laughs> yeah, not all, or we just don't pay attention. Yeah, it, it repackaging lah, basically. But um, where he ends up, there was this one I can't tell you. I don't know. Back in does, India, probably. Does India have a promotion? I'm pretty oh, sure they yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. So there you go. That's where he'll go, right? Yeah, mm. hopefully. I mean, I think the American dream. I think I have to call it a day lah. Yeah. Uh, the next one, Katrina Cortez. I have no idea who she is. Wasn't she part of um Leg- Legado del Fantasma? No. She, she, she was that female girl that they recruited, right? Uh, no, no, no. This is not the one. She is a masked female wrestler. Oh, then who's the girl that was in... Oh, uh, Electra Lopez. Electra Lopez. Yeah, a different one, different one. This one, she, uh, uh, Katrina Cortez is Chilean. Clearly, the fact that I confused the two, that means she's not that memorable. Lah. No, no. Uh, yeah, she's been sort of on NXT uh, here and there as, I hate to use the term, but enhancement talent, lah, essentially. Ah, uh, okay. She's like a blue pants, a blue pants. You know, yeah, like yeah, the- a little bit. She's just there, you know, had a few matches here and there. I remember seeing her wrestle, but nothing, like, you know, big. Yeah, so this wasn't really a loss, lah. I mean, yeah, I guess so. Uh, Trey Baxter is another one. Okay, Trey Baxter, I need to Google. Bro, the... Trey Baxter was the guy that Dante Chen fought in his debut lah. Oh, you mean the one who's dating Cora Jade? Yeah. Oh, poor guy. Poor guy. Did he just start a storyline? Yeah. Well, <laughs> that whole thing where he was backstage and then Cora Jade kissed him and said, and then nothing really. But he apparently was in the NXT breakout tournament. So I think he had a good run there. Yeah. And that's where they signed him in the first place. Mm. But like, she looks like any other pasty English man. Like, if he, <laughs> they wanted that, they could have kept a bunch of other people, right? Like Jack Gallagher or whoever. Yeah, I was just thinking of him as well. Mm. Um, yeah, so like, um, not really a loss. But I mean, she sounded like a good work- worker. Mm, mm. Um, is NXT UK short, not short of talent, man? They don't need more people there, man? Maybe he'll go there, or maybe they are different management, they'll sign him. Who knows, right? No, no, but NXT UK is under... WWE. Oh, right, right. True. Eh, whatever. But uh, Cora Jade stayed with NXT, so... They're, Clearly, they're, they won the girl. Uh. Yeah, I mean, she, I mean, she's like, what, 20? The youngest NXT... Uh, really? Superstar. Yeah, yeah. Someone actually still pays attention to NXT, unfortunately. <laughs> and Keeping a 20-year-old over a 40-year-old makes more sense. Uh. I suppose so. And also, she she skates boards to the ring, Ooh. so she, you got a Darby Allen light. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we gotta have another equivalent skateboarder in the WWE. Yeah, that makes sense. Like a punk chick, and you know, she's much more nice to look at than Darby Allen. Anyway, uh, <laughs> next, <laughs> Zayda Ramir. I have no idea who she is. I, I'm looking at a photo now, I still don't know who she is. <laughs> <laughs> probably she, probably uh, not even a WWE NXT person, but a 
performance center member. Maybe she never, never even got out of the PC. Yeah, yeah. She started at Shimmer. She was discovered in Booker T's reality of wrestling camp. Mm-hmm. Uh, yellow, pretty much law. Yeah, like her. I'm looking at her like a wiki thing. It also is very short. So yeah, she's definitely one of those that just started only. I mean, Shimmer, that's one promotion that not, not a lot of us mentioned, but that's a great women's promotion right there. Mm. Um, yeah, I feel like there's a, there's other places for women to actually thrive more than WWE right now. I mm. think even Impact is treating their women wrestlers much better. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, yeah. not much to say. Let's move on, unfortunately. <laughs> Jessie Kamea. Okay, the name sounds familiar, but she's one of those NXT um, talents that show up once in a while. Yeah, I saw... Was it Jessica Mia that was on Isaiah Swerve Surf Squad's uh, Instagram? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 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 Swerve basically was like, uh, you, you'll find your spot or whatever. Yeah. Um, but she seems like someone that, that had been hanging around the NXT developmental for quite a while. Uh, um, and she, she didn't make the breakthrough. La, so she, I guess. She's 33. Mm. So yeah, that's. So yeah. if she's still in development, I think it's. I mean, Becky Lynch is 34 only, bro. Yeah, but I mean, she's literally big time backs right now. You can't compare someone who's starting in developmental at 33 versus someone who's at her peak at 33 or 34. Yeah, yeah. You know? what, so, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, if I'm okay, being a ruthless Vince McMahon businessman, like, mm. do I really need this talent? So, okay. Yeah. I know I know the headline of like this huge release sucks, right? Mm. We all know it sucks. People are losing their jobs. But yeah. the more that we look through the list, it makes... Sense. Oh yeah, it makes kind sense of. from a corporate standpoint. Like if in a utopian world they had infinite amounts of money and they just throw money at anybody, of course everyone will be hired, right? You know? Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. That makes a lot of sense. <sighs> Talking about Isaiah Swerve Scott and Hit Row, the freaking voice mm-hmm. of Hit Row just got released. Okay, this one is the most like, what the fuck are you doing? Be fair was released. You, you, you brought up one of the most important, I mean, the, she's equally as important as the rest of Hit Row. She makes Hit Row. Yeah, exactly. You know right. What I mean? And this is making me very uh-huh. worried for Hit Row because now Hit Row is just three guys and the, the, you, you know, sometimes when you look at a group, there's a spark, like they may not be the main character, but they are there and it's important for them to be there. I feel yeah. like BFAB was that spark for Hit Row and now she's not there. I'm like, oh no, this is bad. This is real yeah. bad. I, I got I got a possible like conflicting view though. Okay. Maybe right, they, they were on the main roster. Then Vince got a good look at them and then was like, hey, this girl, I don't think she can work. <laughs> or maybe she just got found out. Because mm. that was one of the main things that we were unsure of because we was like, isn't she a bit too soon to go to yeah. the main roster? She was quite green yeah. in NXT even. Mm-hmm. So maybe they were like, you know, I we can't do anything. If she's just going to be a valet, then no point. But Perhaps. has she really been in main event matches? I mean, not main event, like main roster matches? Not really, what? She's- no, she's not. But I feel like maybe they probably would duck. Man. I do not know. They, they didn't hit road have like one debut match. Yeah, yeah. Like, But it was the two guys, right? It was yeah. um, AJ and Swerve. Yeah, but it's like... Okay, if Hit Row does become big on the main roster without Big Fab, right? Like, is he going to be like one of those like forgotten members of Hit Row that yeah. was part of their group, but then like 20 years on the road when Hit Row is like these legends, people like forget about this part of their history? I hope not. Well, here's the thing. I don't even think, and this is I like, I don't know, I've gotten to this point where I like, I don't think Hit Row is going to make it either. Like, Hero's going to last for a year or two. It'll be a mid-card faction. That'll be it. This is what I feel. Because I don't think the main roster, the writers, they get. I don't think they get Hit Row. Unless, like, the top dollar said, like, they're writing their own promos. Lah, and yeah. they're not letting people touch what they do. Um, do you think they can bounce back without her? Or do you think they're going to find a replacement for PFAT? Yeah, who would that be? Who would, tell me who would that be? Any girl in the roster that can sing la. Oh, it would be very easy to find her. Any girl in the roster. All of a sudden, he will come up with a different voice. Eh? Or, or <laughs> like, you remember when... Okay, well, this is a throwback, but remember when Shawn Michaels was managed by Sherry? Yeah. The, the, his song was sung by Sherry. Sensational Sherry. I think he's cute. 
I don't yeah. know what he said. And then when he turned heel, he got rid of her. It became him singing his own theme song. <laughs> I, I know I'm is. cute. I know. I'm... So imagine, uh, next week, Hit Row come out is Hit Row. Bunch of <laughs> he guys. Stopped, he stopped knowledge. Yes. <laughs> hit Row. Yeah. Hey, yeah. What's, oh, what's man. That would be on? quite funny. Uh, I mean, like, also, did Shawn Michaels replace um, Sensational Sherry with Luna Vashon or so? Oh, yeah, yeah, for a bit. Bit, yeah, yes. so there is like a history there's a pattern there that like you know I don't but, know whether they're saying that the women are replaceable I hope not but BFAB is literally the voice yeah that's the thing it's like <laughs> unless they change the voice well, like but that, that would be damn stupid yeah then uh, it would be like some random Christina Aguilera hero bro 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 <laughs> bro how about this how about this Carmela Mela is money, money. But, no, hey, but you know, you know no. what? I think Carmela will be a great member of Hit Row, though. Oh, I know who. who? I know who. who? Aaliyah. Oh my god. She ain't she... doing shit. <laughs> Just put her but, there. But she's like a bit the what? 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 what she calls herself? Bougie. Eh? The she bougie, bougie. Yeah, yeah. No, she totally doesn't have the vibe. The vibe is absolutely wrong. She's not I mean, quote unquote like you know in that culture. She's all like atas and bougie. But I, I don't know, man. Like you know, she got a bit of like the atas rap. Right. I don't know. Wait, wait, wait. Didn't Carmela like try to do a record one time? It was uh, your favorite show, bro, that you don't watch. Um, WWE Divas. Like she was trying oh. to collab with uh, R True. Total, to- Total Divas, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like there was one season, I forgot if it was Carmela or it was somebody else. Like one of these blonde <laughs> chicks. Are you sure it's not Naomi? Oh, yeah, no, you're right. It's Naomi. Oh, bro, bro. Naomi, bro. Hit bro. bro Naomi. <laughs> just there she's just there I mean, yeah. I mean how about there's like a bidding war between her uh hit row and the bloodline how about what? that <laughs> for naomi's um membership is it <laughs> i mean yeah eh, she can sing yeah we know that she can sing hmm okay well then she can then she can talk at the same time oh god uh yeah well yeah this one to me is the biggest like what the fuck are you doing they just debuted yeah. for crying out loud. Did on a, did on a, wasn't, didn't someone just debut and then I think got fired also this year? I can't remember who. Uh, um, it, it's happened more than once. Let's just put it that way. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's not coming to my mind, but you know what I mean. Like, it's yeah. just a pattern. Let's move on. Oni Lorcan. Oni Lorcan. <sighs> he, like, okay. So he was in a faction with, uh, it was Oni and the other guy whose name I was. They are so bland. That's the problem. They are so bland. They are so forgettable. Bro. Is Danny Birch, bro. Oh, Danny Birch, okay. So now, it was only Lockin, Danny Birch, Rich Holland, and Pete Dunn, right? Pete Dunn, don't know, like, not around already. Um, oh, yeah, that's true. Rich You're Holland right. got called up to the main roster. I forgot which brand because I barely see him. Smackdown. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he had but, a vignette. He was just backstage. Uh, whatever. With, with Aliyah and all the people that just came yeah. out on the roster, right? Yeah. Um, This one, I'm like, okay, lor. I'm not surprised, lor. I think only Lockin... It's like his level was always NXT. He will ne- he's never gonna make be a yeah main roster guy. Yeah, yeah. He's like a journeyman kind of, yeah. right? Yeah, so I, I feel like indies or maybe AEW Dark Elevation <laughs> sort of <laughs> okay. deal. Uh NWA. NWA. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. she's just it's, she's kind of a throwback, and that's the problem. Maybe WWE doesn't want throwback wrestlers anymore. No, no, yeah. Yeah, they want to focus on the future and like if they're gonna get kids, right? Mm. You think a four year old or eight year old will look at Oni Loken and be like, "Wow, what a superstar!" <laughs> I I want an Oni Loken action <laughs> Give figure. Give me an Oni Loken figurine. No, 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 that's not fucking happening. Yeah. Um. Okay. So one more, and this one I'm also very surprised at because you could see that the potential was there. She had a very unique look. Unique style. She can work the mic. Plus, she's the wife of John Morrison, who is not doing anything as well. So I, I'm I'm surprised John Morrison didn't show up on the list. Maybe because he's good friends with the Miss. But I mean, not that I want him to be fired. Of course, I freaking you know what I've said about uh, the drip drip and how like I feel like he's super yeah. underrated. Yeah. But yeah, his wife just got released as well. Frankie Monet. Um. Honestly, I'm not surprised, but I'm very disappointed. Okay, why were you not surprised? Okay, Taya Valkyrie. Like, let's call her by her real, very awesome indie name, by the way. Mm-hmm. Like, Taya Valkyrie is like a journey woman, mm. you know? She she did state that going to WWE was a dream. Mm. And I was happy for her when she finally got signed. Mm. But she made her name, you know, um, as 
in Mexico, she was an awesome like a luchadore. That's mm. what they call it, right? Um, she she was great in Impact. Um, she was even challenging Tessa Blanchett for the women's knockouts title in Impact. So she was legitimate, right? Mm. But I just felt that she came to WWE too late. Like mm. she was in developmental, and she's like 34, 35, um, slightly younger than John Morrison, mm-hmm. and then they gave her a complete new name change. Like this Frankie Monet was put slap on her yeah. like only this year. Uh, and she has like almost 13 years of wrestling experience known as the uh, Valkyrie. So it's, she was always going to be on uphill battle. Mm. My only surprise was that they didn't push her when she got onto the NXT roster. Why didn't she, why wasn't she fighting Raquel Gonzalez yeah. for, that, the, see, for the main title? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that is the very curious thing, right? So immediately when she debuted, she's like, wow, she got the look. She, she's a complete package. She's a star. Really, yeah. like anybody can tell, but I I wonder if this is a Vince McMahon thing. Didn't see anything in her or whatever. Like, or even like in NXT itself. You're right. She didn't have like any major storyline. She was hanging out with uh, Robert Stone, which obviously is you know if you cannot assign to Robert Stone, your your career is dead. Um, or, I mean, she wasn't with him, but you know they were like playing up angles there. Yeah. yeah, she had a few matches here and there. They weren't bad, but it's like. Like they did nothing with her in the old I, NXT, NXT 2.0, and then now poop gone. I think they really mishandled her run in WWE or yeah. NXT. Like she was, re- she really had all this. Uh, not only just the fact that she's a star, right? The mm. way she carried herself, mm. but she had all this momentum and clout from mm. the indies. Like everyone in the indies knew her, or at least knew her connection with John Morrison, if nothing else. You know. I, I wonder if it's a case of we don't want no indie talents. You know, that whole vibe of, yeah, well, we just want to focus on building our own stars. These indie But, people will never have that connection that they do with the company. So let's just, you know, cut our losses. I'm just very sad for her because like she said, like, it was, it's mm-hmm. always been her dream to make it to WWE. Can you imagine you work so hard yeah. to get your dream job and you only lasted like six months in your dream job. What's next? And here's the thing. You talk about her having a legacy as her uh, other name, right? Valkyrie? Taya Valkyrie, I'm, yeah. Taya Valkyrie. I'm like... But then, uh, just when she debuted, I was like, wow. And honestly, if she debuted on the main roster next week and is challenging one of the main stars, I can see it because she has yeah. the presence, you yeah. know? So, like, you could have hot shot her and, like, okay, fine. You have a, a few weeks versus one of the top baby faces. Mm-hmm. And then after that, title contention, she doesn't win, but immediately you build a name. You immediately have a mid to top tier uh, competitor already in her, I, I believe. She... You know, yeah. she has that presence. She has the talent. So I'm like, th- that's to me, out of the whole list, was the biggest waste. I watched her for the first time in Lucha Underground. I don't mm. know if you saw some of her work in Lucha Underground. Um, she was an amazing promo. She had this great yeah. character in Lucha Underground. Um, uh, she a bit of this wild, a bit of Luna version, but very wild mm. child, crazy girl. And um, how I connected with her was when I watched her interview with Chris Van Vliet. Mm. She did like an in-depth interview with him. And she was literally, her her origin story, bro, very similar to Lita, bro. Oh. She wanted to get a wrestling school, find a wrestling school in the US, couldn't find. She was mm. from Canada. Mm. Um, she wanted to find in US, couldn't find. She was like, okay, fuck it. I'm just going to take a one-way trip to Mexico oh. and figure myself out. So wow. she was this one random Canadian blonde girl in Mexico, like going to like Triblia and all these like huge ass um, arenas, mm. Arena Mexico and trying to find a job. And she really had to work her way up and prove herself uh, in that crazy world. You know, you know how it is in Mexico, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And she basically took care of herself, um, built up her career. Um, and then from there, she got picked up by Lucha Underground. So like mm. her her journey in the in wrestling is so unique. Um, you know? I think it's safe to say that she will land on her feet. This is, you know, not a big like loss for her. She'll definitely yeah. find a place to be. Like. If it's not Mexico, probably AEW, whatever. And, you know... Um, I'm just like, like this is, and maybe because like her husband, John, they both don't seem to play the political game in the company. Yeah, yeah. Maybe because they know that they have all these other options they can easily just go to. So they just lepa lah. And then you don't push yourself there. Then they're like, okay lah, you know. Do you think release. John gives you a bit of Rob Van Dam vibes? Yeah. Like he's very, I don't play politics. I just want to do my own thing. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, in a corporation that big, sometimes you have to chocho a bit, you know, you have to suck up a bit, you have to like pop into the writer's room. Hi, everybody, come. 
I got uh, McDonald's for every or some bullshit like that. I don't okay, that's not what it is, but you know what I mean, right? Yeah, it's okay, it's so weird because I feel like in every company, mm. they seem to only want to reward the ones who are like super crazy driven. And I get it. Like mm. okay, you want to know that you can be a workhorse for the company and I want to put more of my stock or investment in you. Sure. But I also feel those people who are just chill, not that they just want to get a payday, but their mm. character that this position is, I'm not a guy who is like a crazy, I'm going to strive and get everything. I'm just going to, I want to do my own thing. I yeah. just want to be me, be left alone. There are people like that. And it's not as if it's, it, sh- it shouldn't be frowned upon if there's people who just want to do that, you know? Mm. But there is a value to them as a talent as well. Yeah. Like you can't j- just put them aside just because they're like that. Well, it's the, uh, I hate to say the political game, but it is what it is, right? Like you talk about those people who are like, oh, ultra passionate, pushing about this, that, and the other thing. There's that. and But because you see people like that, right? You oh. see them more often they are in your emails more often and this is not just about wrestling we're talking about like almost like real visibility life stuff. yeah visibility if you are constantly talking to the boss about a b c d e even if it's about bullshit nonsense at least you are in their eye line so some yeah. people might view that as them playing the political game some people might view that as oh you're just making friends what's wrong with that right and in yeah. fact it's good for your career so and John Morrison strikes me as the kind of guy who's like, oh yeah, I know I'm freaking talented. I'll just relax one corner. You want me to do this, Ken? I'll do whatever you want me to do, but I'm not there trying to pitch you ideas for A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And maybe Vince and company, they are the type. Actually, they are definitely the type, right? We've heard from podcasters. They like it when people go up to them, challenge them, you know, um, pitch ideas for their characters, stuff like that. Yeah, and John Morrison is, is entering his 40s, I mean, I mean... Mm. I but, think that's the age where you kind of like, I'm not going to take a bullshit from people. I just want to yeah. do what I make me happy. I mean, you would know Mr. Young. Oh, yes, of course. 100%. <laughs> like the last time we saw Morrison was on Raw. He was stretching and then he was interacting with Reggie. I'm like, what? Okay. Uh, but things uh, might things might pick up Mr. Young because mm. uh, as fr- as you know, you know, from the grapevine, the miss has just been eliminated from Dancing in the Stars. Oh, God. So he's, he's going to get his buddy back soon on TV. So I hope they feud. I hope it becomes a big thing. And I hope that Miz, like, Miz has reached the top already, right? Yeah. I, I really yeah. actually hope that Miz somehow helps his buddy out and gives yeah. Morrison the shine. But then again, Morrison could be at that stage where he doesn't care about yeah. that he's like oh I, I don't care to be champion I just is, you know enjoy the paycheck isn't pay it so weird because like a decade ago we were talking about who's the Martin Genetti who's oh. the Shawn Michaels of the group yeah. everyone thought the Miss is gonna the, be the one that gets pushed aside right yeah, it turns out it was the complete opposite right yeah, sometimes life works out in a weird <sighs> place man uh, anyway so there you go those are the massive releases of the, the second release of 2021 the second wave of releases some yeah. shockers, some like, uh, some okay lah, makes sense. So all in all, uh, let me go back to my initial point. I'm not surprised at any of them. I'm just like seeing that it happened because people lost their yeah. jobs and there was a lot of potential here. A lot. Yeah, it was, it was. But I think at the end of the day, we kind of see the reason why. Yeah, yeah. It, it's not like, for example, like a Bray Wyatt. That one was like, what the fuck? You know, yeah, that one, yeah, that was still the most shocking of the year. Mm. And it's, and yeah. uh, in case you didn't know, of course, uh, Rotunda, uh, what was his full name? Uh, uh, Winham, Win- uh, Winham Rotunda. Winham Rotunda recently just changed his Twitter handle because his contract is up. So, ooh, will he be all elite at full gear? I mean, if you want to drop a big surprise, now would be the time, right? Um, yeah. So, like, I didn't his. Uh, didn't his contract come out right around Halloween like 29 mm. October right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah I, rem- I remember the date yeah because it, it was my birthday right so oh, yeah. <laughs> but but I feel like full gear will be great but I just would wonder where does he fit in the current storylines mm. okay which storyline we want to see him appear most or affect like that order it, it, it seems like the most logical fit right Scully he come back and he completely revamps himself he's like this corporate guy you know, I would love to see that. Like, he seems like the sort of creative... Um, he seems like the creative sort that could come up with whatever and you don't have to necessarily pigeonhole in, him into like, oh, weird cult guy or creepy supernatural character guy. He could literally come back as a, a wheeling, dealing, business, business man. You know, whatever. 
I uh, I I want to see. Okay, that's the thing. Like I'm torn. I want to see him do something new, mm. but I also want him to. I want to see him acknowledge all his past things in WWE. Like I felt the best person that transition was Malakai Black. Mm. I think everything that he did in NXT informs how he is presented in AEW. So I right. I hope that. Yes. So for an audience, right, it's not so much of a stretch or this is too much of a departure. Right. Well, he could, you know, initially come in as his Uncle Rogers type character. We, we've seen that before. Can you imagine him as an Uncle Rogers interacting with like Johnny Hungy oh, or God. Orange Cassidy? Yeah, yeah, could be, could be. <laughs> well, we'll have to wait and see. Anyway, talking about Full Gear, um, anything else you want to mention before we jump into our preview of uh, AEW? Uh, no, man, let's... Go. Moto on ahead, let's go. All right, let's jump right in. Okay, full gear. Uh, has anything interesting happened on Rampage as we speak, by the way? Um, no, uh, all I know is uh, there was an awesome pull apart between, um, I think, what, Eddie Kingston, CM Punk, mm. and that, I think the main event was a match between uh, the Super Click and Dark Order. And ah, I wow. just, when I was looking at eyeing the screen, Adam Cole was the last person standing before the end of the broadcast. Like. Yeah, we, we know exactly what will happen between Super Click and Dark Order. Lah, huh? There's not going to be any uh, big shenanigans there because the feud is with the Jurassic Express and Christian Cage anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but um, at the end of the day, I feel like, ah, man, Adam Cole, Adam Cole, do you feel Adam Cole's momentum is still there or no? Um, no, no, he's completely, he's become the third buck, lah, basically. He's sort of just <laughs> yeah. there goofing around, you know, and I know Jim Cornette is jumping up and down and like waving his fists at this, like, oh, I hate Adam Cole now because he's basically <laughs> turned his back on everything he's done, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, he's if he is having fun, then okay, like, he can go there and have fun and do his young buck shit. Lah. Yeah, that's a crazy thing. But but that, what Jim Cornette say, I think has a lot of, um, it's valid. Lah. Like, you were the biggest star in NXT and now now you're playing second, third fiddle to, with your friends. Like, yeah. is that really what you want? Or can you do more? Or is this just going to be a thing that they do for now and you eventually lead to a story? I think that is what it is. Like, there are way too many, quote unquote, like big names there vying for their top position. That's why like CM Punk, we've talked about this before, CM Punk's sort of like, you know, taking some time before he gets there, right? Um, maybe Adam Cole's doing the same. So now it's Brian Danielson's time to rise to ascendancy so that you don't have too many people clashing all at once, which I can yeah. understand. But it does devalue his sort of, uh, you know, time there. Or, or maybe they could just, you know, have a fallout lah at some point. Yeah. Yes, yes. Adam Cole and the Young Bucks. Uh, um, at the end of the day, I feel like it's okay. I don't mind them like, kind of like giving each person a, 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 a turn mm. you know in who to push mm. but I just hope that I mean CM Punk I'm I'm a bit like not that I don't think AEW mishandled his return mm. I still feel that he is definitely a draw mm-hmm. but the risk of overexposure definitely is being felt because um, him appearing on Dynamite and he had this great talk that he gave to John Moxley get well soon John Moxley um, oh, and by the way just boom, to uh Talk about that for a quick second. John Moxley, they announced that he was checking himself into rehab uh, for alcohol addiction, right? Was it? Y- yes, correct, correct. So, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, certainly best wishes go out to him. Like, you know, uh, kudos on him for seeking help and admitting that he had that problem. And now we just hope for the best for his recovery. And, you know, yes. uh, going back to what CM Punk did, he basically um, used his promo time to wish John Moxley the best, which is really, really cool. Yeah, and I think, but do you realize that was actually the first time mm. since his debut that he actually had a sit down promo with the audience, mm. Mm. right? And mm. I feel like that that is a thing that made me realize, okay, this is rare, and I appreciate this. I don't want this too often. Yeah. Um. And also, yes, maybe him coming on commentary here and there is fine. Having like you know one off matches with all these small guys are fine, but like. I don't want it to be the the norm. The Eddie yeah. Kingston now is a proper feud. I think this is the first proper feud yeah. since W L. Yeah, which is good. Like I mean, uh, yeah, yeah. Just just keep him off my TV. Not because I don't like him, but because you are going to overexpose. Yeah. We've talked about this at nauseum already. So, yeah. um, uh, the question is though, is this match going to be added to the full gear card? Seems like it. Seems like it. Uh, hmm. I think it's already been teased. Didn't really see what exactly happened. Um, on Rampage, Rampage we probably would know yeah yeah. Uh, Mr. Young speaking of which 
we really need to power through full game because I realized that somebody is waiting for me. Huh? I'm supposed to meet at 11.30. I realized it's really 11.30. Wow, okay, okay. Here we go then. Brian let's Danielson go, go. versus Miro. Miro replaces John Moxley. Um, which makes me wonder, was Moxley ever going to win this or was this going to be a straight shot for Brian Danielson to challenge? I think, I think Brian Danielson was always going to be the guy. Yeah, and it makes the most sense, right? You talk about contenders for the World Championship. Uh, very quickly, I want to mention that... Um, Kenny Omega had a very back and forth, very even match with Angels, <laughs> some don't know who. And I'm <laughs> like, why do they keep doing this? He's Ellen supposed Angels. Ellen Angels from the Dark Order. No, 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 no. I, I understand you want to put over your friends and shit like that, but you are the main champion. You should be demolishing him in five seconds uh, or, thing, uh, or five minutes. One thing I appreciated about the, the, the fact that they started out AEW Dynamite with their world champion finally. Yeah, finally, right? Like when yeah. the the music hit, I was actually pumped up. I was like, oh, okay. And yeah, then yeah. this went back and forth. I was like, what are you doing? You you don't ex like can you imagine the attitude era? Prang, dun -dun -dun -dun, and then freaking Stone Cold comes out and then has a has a 20-minute match with some jobber from Kai and Tai. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Bro, 20 minute competitive match with D'Lo Brown. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, <laughs> as much as I love D'Lo Brown, no. There is Some, a. Uh. Sometimes I need to treat your main events as main events. When I mean that, it's like main events don't even interact with the low cut jobbers. No, can. But if they do, is they put them down or they destroy them. You know what I mean? It's like, I, I hate. Yeah. Like, uh, I, I, I get that they are trying to be fair to everybody, but still, when he does that, it makes their main title look small. Like, oh, yeah. okay, you're yeah. not that special after all. Anyway. It does, it does. Uh, Kenny Omega talking about him. Uh, okay, we'll leave that for last since that's the main event, it seems like. Uh, Darby Allen with Sting versus MJF with Wardlow. Okay, the clash of the... This is like the Rock versus Triple H. The when new they generation. Are, yeah, when they were feuding for the Intercontinental title. Yeah, a peek into the future. And I, I really love it. Yeah. Um, it's literally the two building blocks of AEW. The, the main face guy, the main mm. heel guy. Uh, I mean, it's great. Yeah, just don't let Darby Allen talk too much. MGF do all the talking. Great. Like, I, I don't believe yeah. Darby Allen uh, admitted that he was an incel. That was like, what the fuck? Um, I didn't really watch that promo, but oh. I'm glad I didn't watch it. Because MGF <laughs> was like, oh, you, you like him because he you are... No, he's talking to the crowd, right? You are just like him. You're all a bunch of losers, incels. And then Darby Allen was like, yeah, I may be all those things. I'm like, oh my God, did you just call yourself an incel? <laughs> Oh <laughs> no, that's not good. Uh, Look, my dear friend. Gosh. Okay, but um, who do you think should win this? Um, I think this feud has way more legs, so I would say a lot of shenanigans. Mm. Also, did you see? Okay, during the pull apart, Sting had a bunch of masked men come out to help him, almost mm -hmm, like a mm -hmm. yes army, but it's like a Sting army wearing like these paper masks. So I'm like, what is going on? Is that their thing now? I mean, I thought it was visually interesting. I saw the, I saw the highlights of that. Yeah, I thought it but, was cool. But what is the meaning? You know what I mean? So he has a bunch of followers? Incel, his incel group? <laughs> when you talk about meaning, bro, have you seen Darby Allen's promos, like pre-match promo where he just jumped off a helicopter <laughs> in a skateboard? Like, it has no meaning. It's no, no. artistic. <laughs> yeah, no, it's to show that he gives zero fucks, right? That he's a daredevil, blah, blah, blah. That one kind of got meaning, like, but it's like, where did this random masked man come from? Like, And I'm pretty sure one of the masked men, maybe this is what will happen. One of the masked men will come up, pretend to help Darby Allen, beat him down, and then remove the mask. It's freaking the pineapple. Like a member of the pineapple. You, this is what I'm calling, this is the finish of the match. So MJF M wins shenanigans. MJF wins. Uh, I would say the opposite. I would say the story they're trying to tell is MJF beating down on Darby Allen and Darby Allen rising from it. So I mean, mm. that's probably a better story to tell. So oh, Darby Allen for the win. Also the um, promo, right? They were talking about how, uh, about wrestling. Like MJF is like, you don't know how to wrestle. You just do daredevil shit. Actually, Maybe based on that, that could be the finish where Darby Allen beats MJF with a wrestling move, a roll-up uh, schoolboy, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. actually, now that you reminded me, right, because of that one line in the promo, I think it makes sense for that to happen. Like, yeah. where Darby Allen doesn't do a suicide dive type move, uh, but actually yeah. beats him with wrestling. And then MJF will be too about that, and then he'll challenge yeah. him to some bullshit match. Mm. 
you know how refreshing it is to actually speculate on a match and know that they're not going to come up with the worst finish ever. Well, like they might actually come up with decent finishes. Well, 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 we'll wait and see, okay? We could be overlooking, we'll be uh, we're looking too much into it and then they come up with some bullshit. You never know. You watch. The, either, <laughs> either this happens or completely all the masked men come out and, and yes, yes. Hey, yeah, wait, no, sorry. Wrong, uh, <laughs> wrong channel. Wrong bro. channel. Uh, okay, the Lucha Bros mm. versus FTR for the AEW World Tag Team Championships. Mm, yeah, um, actually gonna, I'm looking forward to this match because I think it's going to be a great uh, showcase of both their styles. Yep. And uh, the best thing about this match is there's no young bucks in the title picture. <laughs> yes, like with FTR, you know they'll slow it down for the Lucha Bros, the Lucha Bros, so they can have this like proper like North American style match. And no. I'm also looking forward to it. Storyline wise too, it's like freaking FTR. They're coming out to like Lucha style oh. music with the Triple A titles. It's so like disrespectful. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah, bro. Do you listen to their theme song on Dynamite? Like some Morodo. Yeah, yeah. You know, those like 80s disco. Yeah, yeah. Do, 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 Fucking do, do, do. funny. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's just like, and they're really pissing off the uh, the crowd, like the Lucha Bros, right? So. And the I, entire Lucha community. For yeah. Sure. Yeah. I'm. Okay. Does FTR win just to pile more heat on them? I think they should. They should, right? But Lucha only had the title, just got the title like two months ago. I think yeah. it's too early. Yeah. Maybe another babyface win, but just barely. I think just barely. Mm. Then, so FTR can have a reason to whine and yeah. bitch and moan about it. Say, yeah. oh, we want rematch. You know? He's, they are still the Triple R champions no matter what. So. Mm. And, and they could foreseeably do, okay, you want back this Triple R? Come, we do a title for title. Then they can yeah. swap it back. Yeah. And then Lucha Bros can get the Triple R title and go and defend it at Triple R. Which yeah, they do, that'll, right? That'll be, be dope. That will be dope. So that could be it, long, yeah, long. Uh, in a circle, jerk. I mean, in a circle. Mm -hmm. Chris Jericho, Jake Hager, Sammy Guevara, Santana, and Ortiz versus the Men of the Year and American Top Team. So, did you watch the whole interaction? Yes, I did. And uh, uh, did uh. you see? Uh, we just got reposted by Paige Vincent. Oh no, shit! Oh my God, Paige Vincent looks so hot. And yeah, bro. Like, hey, hey, oh, serious, was... fuck! I stop with the bare knuckle fighting. Stop it. You are going to hurt yourself with this shoot fighting nonsense. You are born to be a heel, um, a badass. Just, just start training pro wrestling. Now just do promos. In the meantime, on the side, do training. Yeah, I mean, like her UFC run it kind of like fizzled out already, right? She's not yeah. really that no, hot in that's, Europe MMA. Yeah, that's why she, she transitioned to doing bare knuckle fighting. Yeah, but if I'm not wrong, it was only like a four fight deal right mm. it was paying her really well but it was only a four fight deal I honestly feel that she can be the best female MMA crossover athlete since Ronda Rousey yep. just because she has the personality to match it yeah yeah. but does she have the um, natural like the gifts in the ring like, that one is yet to be seen because she hasn't uh, shown any of that yet and I hope I hope she does I hope they don't go and um, like what they did with Junior Dos Santos I hope they don't expose her yet okay oh. this one you have a gem you need to go and train and train and train so that she can have a proper match. Bro, clearly she can take all five men on. So it's all good, bro. She can do it, bro. Only that's, fans, I'm going to sign up. Oh, that setup was then <laughs> what? Lah, but, oh my gosh. She, like, she's hot at AF. She's yeah. really good on the mic. can stand there with Chris Jericho and go back and forth. Yeah. And, and, and she set it up. Lah. That joke, they set it up one. Lah. So, yeah, of you know. course she did. But the funny thing is, I read, I didn't realize, uh, I for completely forgot, but I just got reminded that she actually made, to the, made it to the finals of Dancing with the Stars a oh, couple yeah. of years ago. Yeah, that too. So she's like a legit like multimedia darling, right? Yeah. So she can do everything. She can fight legitimately. She can mm -hmm. dance legitimately. Now she, I think she can rest. I really honestly think she can. What I tell you, a drink smash, I'm going to call it She's gonna do a one-time random Hari Karana on like Chris Jericho Ooh. just to annoy her. Yeah, yeah. Actually, no lah. The, she's done some really cool things where, like, you know, she had one of the guys in the corner and then she like body shots. And oh, they, yeah. they didn't look bad. They look like they hurt. Yeah, yeah. So what what if right AEW just stumbled on their Ronda Rousey equivalent star? Exactly. Just out of the blue. And yo. If they are, I don't. I don't think they are stupid. I think they will be able to see this, and I hope. I really hope they capitalize. Let's get her training, at, and yeah. you know, I mean, we don't have her go out there and do hurrah kanranas and bullshit like that. Keep it mat based, simple. Just make it so that her shoot moves look good. Her work moves look shoot. 
You know what's the funniest thing? The one we are most excited about is not even in the match. No, no, it's Ron, uh, it's uh, it's friggin' uh, Paige Van Zandt. Like you talk about yeah. Ronda Rousey, right? Like Ronda Rousey took to pro wrestling so quickly, so easy. She was like a Kurt Angle, basically. Yeah. I don't know if Paige Van Zandt can do that, but she doesn't need to do that. I feel that she would be a, you know what? She'll be a better character for wrestling than Ronda Rousey. Ronda yeah. Rousey was always quite wooden. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, Paige Vincent can be. I mean, she's already trading bucks with Chris Jericho. Yeah, I mean, what, yeah. What else? What else can you say? And right? she's hot as f. I know, Mister Young. I know. Chill. Oh my god. Okay. Anyway, um. But yeah, she is. She is. But sure. Yeah. For the heels on this one, you got Ethan Page, Scorpio Sky, Andre Arlovsky, Junior Dos Santos, and the big one, ooh, Dan Lambert. So. Obviously, this is going to be the one where they humiliate Dan Lambert finally. Uh, the faces uh, get the come up, uh, you know, get the yeah. big victory, yeah? That, that makes a lot of sense. But you know what? Um, Andre Alosky, he's quite legit as well, right? He's like an <sighs> undefeated guy, Bro, right? Bro, here's another one. Just like the Junior Dos Santos one. It's like, you didn't really build up Andre Alosky, you know, and he's like a legit former UFC champ. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So uh the 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 most recognizable name Jorge Masvidal is not nowhere near this match. New, is it? new, new, new. So well, his I mean, shit was one off lah. Yeah, I because he has a legit fight career still like very much alive lah. <laughs> He's Arlovsky, the only one that is still relevant yeah, Relevant. Arlovsky and Junior, they are like okay like they are like legit shoot fight careers are pretty much winding down. So they are like okay like, come mess around here. Yeah, you know what I really like the fact that they are so open in mentioning UFC, mm. the MMA community, and I know WWE. That's the problem. They never really acknowledge it. Yeah. But like the fact that they embrace it, I think is great for mm. wrestling fans yeah. all around. And there's a reason, by the way, this is a street fight to hide the fact that, you know, Arlovsky and Judo Santos and Dan Lambert are not trained workers. Yeah, but I just want them, just give me a one-time still shot to Dan Lambert, I'm happy. Really. Oh yeah, yeah that's, that's <laughs> the whole point. Still chair, still chair That's go. the whole point. That's the whole point, right? So anyway, uh, you know that P- PVZ will be part of this as well. So I can't wait for that. I will watch yeah. this match only for Paige Van Zandt. Ah, uh, I know, bro. Next thing you know, bra and panties. <laughs> okay, yeah, I don't think so. Hey, don't forget that AEW is quite a woke company, okay? So that will never happen. Of course, lah, they won't, lah. But yeah. then again, I mean, and, and Cody. Did you Cody, see, hold on, did you see what she was wearing? She was pr- practically in her bra already anyway. Uh, yeah, then, okay, lah. Then you know what, it's what's going to happen next. Like, only uh, fans, bro. They mentioned only fans. Stop, stop. <laughs> uh, okay, let's move on. Dark, you know, uh, Britt Baker versus Tay Con, Tai Con, whatever. How, it's spelled T-A-Y, but it's Tai, right? Yeah, so, uh, I um, mean, Britt Baker, we didn't come on, clearly. Move yeah, on, let's go. Yeah, this one, don't waste, don't waste time, <laughs> huh? She's barely even been on... Yeah. Dynamo, she came up for a save, but like... Eh. I don't know how Tai is the one that is the contender over so many other people. Yeah, and a J even would have been, made more sense, right? But yeah. Whatever lah. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is pretty much a one-sided victory. Unless they want to really swerve us, but I don't think so. Okay. Unless uh, somebody debuts right after the match. Hmm. Ooh, 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 ooh. Not the ju- recently released cannot lah. A bit too soon. Uh. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Maybe some of them forget that they had 30 day clause. Maybe they even they didn't even have it in their schedule. Who yeah. Knows? Uh, Kenny Omega. Actually, before we get to the main event, do you think this is where Wyndham Rotunda shows up? Where at this no, no, pay per view or at this yeah, match? At the pay per view lah, somewhere lah. I think it will be. I think it would make a very newsworthy news for mm. him to appear. Uh, I'm just wondering where. I know I haven't thought of where because yeah. that order I think is not a really a good landing spot mm. in terms True. of the story right now being told. True. Actually, uh, if you look yeah. at the entire card up and down, it's like any way you try to fit in would be like shoehorning. Like you know, you're yeah. just trying to shove him in just to have him show up. Yeah, maybe. So just a one-off. Okay, but is it what? Okay, what's Malachi Black doing? Nothing. Ooh. Maybe he could be promoing and then, hello. Yeah. Didn't, okay, Cody Rhodes lost to and, uh, Andrade. I don't know whether it's going to be any last minute match where <sighs> Cody appears or whatever. But you know, <laughs> I feel like Cody is the guy that always takes the pin for every time a new person debuts. So maybe Cody could be the one <laughs> um, getting uh, pushed to the dark side by Wyndham. I don't know. Maybe maybe uh, Wyndham is the one who seduces him to the dark side. He gets rid of Arn Anderson. Oh, that could be a whole storyline. But that means we would have to see more of Cody Rhodes. Bro, I want Wyndham and Malachi Black in the same ring, teasing mm. affection or 
Unholy Alliance. Oh, okay, okay, there you go. Uh, here we go then, Kenny Omega versus Hangman Adam Page for the AEW World Championship. Now, I mean, I guess the real question is, is this Adam Page's crowning moment? Mm, yeah. So my higher level question is, did, did he do it just at the right time? Was it too late? Or was it too soon? What's mm. your thoughts? Uh, I, I dare say that he... Hangman Page is as hot as ever with the AEW crowd. Every time he's come out, he's revealed yeah. himself, whatever. Huge pops, right? Yeah. yeah. I do think it's too soon, too. Because I want to see Kenny Omega versus Daniel uh, Brian Danielson for the AEW title as well. That's mm -hmm. probably going to be in the future, right? Like, yeah. Brian Danielson versus Hangman Adam Page? Face versus face? I don't know, man. Maybe yeah, that exactly. could be a one-off like match at New Year's uh, or winter is coming that's what they did last year yeah or it could uh, be one yeah. of those situations where they have a friendly match they shake hands after that law. yeah but I don't think that will be a rivalry per se mm. if Hangman Page is the champion they probably need to bring out a new heel yeah but I mean yeah. it kind of shits on um his uh, like I, I don't know you know oh ho uh, holy shit what, what if Okay, this might be a stretch, lah. Mm. But what if Hangman Page wins, have a crazy celebration, everything goes dark, win them. Win him appears straight, hot shotted to the main title picture. <sighs> <laughs> will that will that be like a a spit in the face to all the AEW fans, or will people be literally marking out for it? What do you think? I think people will mark out for it. But you take away from Hangman's, you, you shit on his return, like You take away from his moment. He needs that big winning winning moment. You he know? is like that Chris Benoit coron coronation or Bret Hart coronation yeah. moment. So That's why, uh, in a way, uh, I feel like maybe he shouldn't win this. Let Kenny Omega win this. And then Kenny Omega goes on to feud with Brian Danielson, but Hangman's still like, oh, yeah, I missed my shot, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but but I, I, I get what you're saying though. Like It feels like if he doesn't win it now, it's now or never, right? Yeah. On, you said it's too soon. Actually, I think it's too late. Mm. Honestly, in my opinion, because I thought that he was even way hotter before. Right. Like he went away for his um, what, what do you call it? I think he had, uh, leave. the 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 child gave a uh, childbirth, right? Yeah, yeah. His, and wasn't he supposed to be scheduled for all out to be the champion? And mm. then they pivoted with Christian and Kenny Omega. Yeah. I thought that was when he should have been uh, crowned yeah. the champion. So okay, if Hangman Adam Page wins, he becomes champion. Then he moves on to face Brian Daniel. So it kind of like nullifies the entire um championship elim eliminated tournament, right? That whole journey that Brian Danielson has taken because, you know, he goes on to face Adam Page. He's not going to take the title off of Adam Page immediately. That would be such a, a buzzkill. Okay. Okay. The best booking sense to make is that they will have that one-off match. Mm. They will have an amazing like 30-minute match, mm. but it's just going to end because Kenny Omega comes and distracts uh, Brian Nelson and I think then they can pivot because I think Brian Nelson is the kind of person that like you know what I don't have to be the champion mm, mm. I can just give this great rub and put over Hangman Page and then I can pivot and get sidetracked by my rivalry with Kenny Omega right and then they have and they their, their rivalry will be a, the sort of rivalry that doesn't need a title right so Hangman Page will have the title and he'll move on and feud with whoever mm. lah. you know who I still think should be the biggest heel to fight Hangman Page after this Ooh. It should be Cody, bro. Come oh, on. God. Go let back on his word. Cody, let Cody go back on his word. Stop it with the I'm sorry to the fans. I will do better. I will uh, not turn. Fuck off. That I will I will not turn. I will <laughs> not turn. It would be interesting <laughs> like if he somehow words it or you know bullshits his way into a title match, but then he claims he's doing it for the fans. Yeah, yeah. It, that would know, be crazy, man. Like like really play this deluded, like, you know. Oh, villain wow. who thinks he's a hero. Uh, well, uh, I mean, we'll never know. But you know what? I'm how excited are you for Full Gear as compared to like All Out? Because I remember All Out was CM Punk's like yeah. debut, yeah. so I remember that was, the hype was really crazy. How uh, what, how would you say your hype level is for Full Gear? Well, the fact that I am going to buy the pay per view, you know, on okay. Fight TV, right? Like says a lot already. You know, yeah. I think yeah. a lot of it has to do with Paige Van Zandt. Um <laughs> That's why I say she's money. She needs to be like you know groomed. Yeah. You know, eh, bro, I just thought something. Like, mm. hey, we, we also have kind of haven't confirmed whether Shane Pong is going to fight Eddie Kingston, right? Yeah. But if you think about it, right, the selling point of this pay-per-view is Hangman Page coronation. Yeah. Um, And I think, I mean, Inner Circle versus 
American top 10, I don't know whether it's the reason why people buying a pay-per-view, but I think there is some curiosity there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But other than that, right, it's actually, people are just buying it because it's an AEW pay-per-view. Like, people trust mm. that it's going to be a good yeah. But it's not really because of a certain match, in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. Which actually is kudos to them as a company for being able to put out pay-per-views that are buy-worthy. You see, because they still rely on this whole buying a pay-per-view model, whereas WWE yeah. is like, okay, like, it's all in the subscription anyway. So you put on a shit show, it doesn't matter, you're subscribed. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, th- this is where the difference is. Like, yeah, we can trust that AEW won't bullshit us on a pay-per-view because they're still selling these pay-per-views and it's not cheap. Yeah, it's not. And like, we're spending like, what, $29.90? Yeah. $30? Yeah. Yeah, so, the fact that so far, mm. this year, I've bought all the pay-per-views for AEW. That means, you know, they let us part with their money. I'll give you yeah. a reason to. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, like we were saying, like it just means that they're doing well and good for them, you know. Um, WWE needs to wake the hell up. Yeah. Uh, going back to all the releases and like, what is the WWE's future? Uh, Braun Breaker? <laughs> uh, Braun, I mean, Braun Breaker definitely is a future star yeah, for yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. But the problem is, who is the here and now? Who is going to immediately challenge and be a number two to mm. Roman Reigns? That yeah. is the question. Or Big E. Yeah, it, it, it's... <sighs> I don't know. Lah. It was supposed to have been a lot of these indie guys, but then they decided yeah. to take this anti-indie stance and now they're all in AD- AEW. Which, okay, yeah. great. Now we have a very clear distinction between the two brands. Yeah. So, like a line in the sand, right? Yeah, whatever type yeah. of wrestling you like, you just gravitate to one or the other. Yeah. Or if you're like us, watch everything. They just need to create their stars and really create them fast and soon. They might need to hotshot some people, uh, unfortunately. You talking about WWE? Even- yeah, WWE, it reminds me of when, right? It's like the ruthless aggression era, mm. like right after Stone Cold and The Rock left, there's this huge vacuum. Yeah. And they need to start building all these new talent. Yeah, yeah. Um, but like with Survivor Series coming up, I think mm. it's a great uh, time to take stock and see where the talent is at. Because like I said, with so many releases, are they even going to fill up enough people for Survivor Series? <laughs> I can, I can, can. That one still can, you know? And, yeah. and uh, coming up soon too, uh, we want to do some fantasy booking, right? Talking about Survivor Series, brand versus brand. What if, uh, what if you had the WWE versus AEW in uh, a Survivor yeah. Series sort of a style pay-per-view? Ooh, I, yeah, can't wait. I can't wait to uh, speculate. As we wrap up uh, today's episode, I would love to uh, let you guys know, please enjoy Full Gear. Mm-hmm. Next week, we'll definitely review it. Yep. And like how Young have uh, mentioned and teased, let's do some fantasy warfare. Yes. AEW versus, uh, versus WWE in a Survivor Series style. Who will be on your team, bruh? 5v5. Oh, I can't wait to think about it. I can't wait to talk about it. That will come very soon. So as always, thank you so much for hanging out on the video. If you haven't already, do us a favor, hit like, hit subscribe on the YouTube channel. If you miss any of it, you want to catch it on the go, uh, just audio because you don't want to see our faces. That's cool too, man. It's all good. You can go to Spotify or Apple Podcasts, anywhere you get your podcast basically and download the audio for absolutely free. Yes, man. And just nice uh, towards the end, the uh, like completely improved so yeah i know right how cool is that it's it's a timing thing bro it's a timing Um, internet gods wake up in the afternoon kick to the gut on social media as well on instagram come slide into our dms and if you want to you know let us know about any latest news you want to talk shit about wrestling hey we love to do that yeah man yeah man of course we'll be here for you every single day because wrestling never sleeps that's and right so, and so uh, do we la. Be, <laughs> be sure to check out foreign's new single on spotify also all right we gotta throw that out there deadlock you guys thank, take guys, a listen to the song support. it's awesome stream the heck out of it uh stream it on youtube as well uh, anything else you want to plug real quick no worries bro it means a lot coming from you to support it Hell mr yeah. dj mr DJ, thank you so much uh yes and please keep supporting the podcast and as well uh, all our future and not our future endeavors all our own endeavors yeah <laughs> all our endeavors left right and center um yeah. come watch me play video games on twitch okay mm. mr young 98 that's me on twitch come look for me and uh, hang out while i play video games i usually play a lot of horror games so you can see me ah screaming and stuff like that very 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 fun uh, but I never need to come and check out one of your uh, one of your stuff you play a stream that I like bro play FIFA please <laughs> that one would be real horror for me because I don't know how to play I'd be terrible I was like who what, what? anyway uh, actually once wrestling games come out I definitely will play those I mean come yeah, on yeah man for sure for sure we definitely got to do something with that uh, okay bro let's wrap it up uh, alright please you, guys 
enjoy full gear this mm-hmm. weekend yeah yeah you gotta go i gotta go we'll see ya next week uh in the meantime stay safe stay healthy and you know stay watching pro wrestling <laughs> <laughs> bye yes bye